All right, what's up everybody? It is Sunday morning for me? No, Sunday afternoon. I was gonna do it in the nice, beautiful weather. It's amazing here in Central Florida, but it is bright. Uh, so for the purposes of camera, I shut the doors and I got the Brewster ready to go. And I've just turned the AC on. Luckily it's not too hot, so it's cooling down here pretty quickly. I ran the fans for like 10 minutes. So hopefully I won't be sweating too badly. But uh, I got some new stuff to use this. I'm, uh, I must be lightening up. I'm like physically lightening up, but I must be lightening up in my old age because this is uh, something that uh, Coach Kemi brought, limited edition. It's a, called GFX. Uh, what it is is gentle snow foam, so GSF, and it's the Christmas edition. <laughs> so it smells oh, like Christmas, I'm telling you. So we're gonna launch it, uh, by the time you see this video, it's already up, so we're launching it tomorrow. Uh, I'm not sure when we'll put this video up, maybe it'll be tomorrow or the next day, uh, but uh, Christmas edition, I bought 1,600 bottles, I think, of this. It doesn't come in, in a five liter, only comes in a one liter. Uh, so if you want this, uh, tell you what, maybe we should do a, a Matt Mormon signature edition. I should sign them and, uh, and sell them. Uh, I'm surprised at myself. I know you guys are gonna scoff at this as well, of me coming up with some uh, fancy scented things, because I'm always talking about the scent is useless. Um, I think scent is useless in products where it makes the product not function as well. Like in our, our um, drying aid, it didn't work as well. Uh, and so the function of it was poorer and it was staining bottles and staining like underneath the front lip of the Tesla when I took it off, it was staining. So in the case of where scent becomes a problem, I don't want it, but generally speaking, it's fun. It makes it makes the product smell better, makes it um, more enjoyable to use. So that's one thing. I'm gonna work with here today. Uh, I'm washing the GDTRS, so I just grabbed another bottle of Atomax. So this, this is a rust inhibitor, which we won't use. Uh, but this is a prototype. I don't know if I'm supposed to share this or not, but I'm going to anyway. Uh, this is a new version of a applicator brush, which is based on the same principle as this. Uh, and so we're uh, looking to improve uh, the race glaze brush for application on the on the tires. So uh, we'll have a matching brush version. This is a 3D printed version from our friends at Detail Factory. Uh, so this we hope to have out in you know, a few months or so. So we're gonna test this out on the car when we put the tire dressing on. All right, so let's get our foam cannon set up. I wanna add some more brake buster here. The Griot's foam cannons are available and up in the store now. The reason why we didn't launch it right away is that it was, it's a huge project because now we have like hundreds of packages to make things simpler for people. So getting all those packages and everything out is, uh, or getting it put in all those packages is not the simplest thing in the world. But I wanted the same suite uh, where we offer it with 1.1, we offer it with the Mosmatic, this is the Mosmatic plug, we offer it with the MTM plug, and we offer it in various different versions. Uh, and uh, I, that was important that we were able to set that up. So. My dad's putting those together up at the uh, curated building, and so we're gonna have it all dialed in for you. I think I got a gallon of brake buster in here somewhere. I should. And there we go, there it is in the bottom. Yep, I knew I had tons of this. I like to freshen everything up before I do a wash. Always shake your products. Learned that tip from my friend Larry Cosilla. Talk to us about always shaking your chemicals before use. It's like, you know, that's a darn good idea. I should do that more often, especially if it's been sitting a while. So uh, we go undiluted brake buster in our foam can, because think about this logically, we're gonna be diluting the heck out of it when we, when we foam the wheels, when we foam the surface. I need to talk to Dave Phillips about getting another gallon a full gallon of the lower pH version. I think it was good, but I didn't test it enough. I didn't, I ran out of it. So I need to get a full gallon of, I'm gonna ask him to send me one of those. We'll get, we'll get moving on that. So uh, Griot's Foam Cannon, full stainless head. Um, it's got the wide mouth, also the ability that you could screw it, like I could screw it right onto this bottle. We also have metering tips. I'm not gonna play with that today. 
I need to watch Nick and Tommy's video on the channel. There is a, um, on the shorts, OG shorts channel. So if you're not subscribed to that, you might want to go subscribe to that. If you're interested in like product specific stuff, Nick and Tommy and the product development team spent a lot of time digging into the details of individual products. Really, the shorts channel is there for the website. So I don't have to clutter the, the uh, we don't have a room on the OG channel making darn videos, 10 videos a week it seems. So we don't, we don't have any room there for that. So it makes sense that we make another, oh yeah, that's fun. I can't wait to phone this and see how it feels. So we're gonna go 150 milliliters. See, I'm lightening up in my old age. Come, just come, call me fun Maddie. No more angry. I'm down to 225 pounds. I've seen 223 even uh, after cycling the other day. And uh, going to wherever I go to. We'll talk about that a little bit more. So let me get a little water here for my rinse bucket. I fill this up about three quarters. It doesn't need to be critical. So I've been seeing a lot of people talking about foam cannons and their anger around this. Uh, I'm late to the, the Griot's party. So we'll talk about that a little bit in this video once I get moving on the wheels. I'll talk about the logic there and what I know. This thing kind of tightens up a bit too. That's interesting. I don't know if that's good. Yeah, so that unthreads. Huh, interesting. I didn't know that that was a thing there. Hmm. So there's a threaded base connection on the foam cannon. I just thought it was a swivel connection, but it's not. Well, learn something new every time you use something. So non-diluted, soap is diluted. I like to get the soap ready when I'm over here messing around getting everything set up. I don't fill up the soap bucket if you're new here. I don't fill up the soap bucket because the suds will die off before we actually get to it. So always do your wheels first. And so we're gonna, we're gonna jump into that first. All right, so let me turn this around. Man, this car looks good. All right, give me a second. You've seen me set up the pressure washer a hundred times. So let me just get that set up and we'll get rolling. Tell you what, I love washing on Swiss tracks. A lot of people, it's one of the major questions is what about the water? The doors are closed. I'm in the garage. We're gonna dump several gallons of water. Uh oh, okay, there we go. We're gonna dump probably, I would guess 12 gallons of water on the ground or so, something like that. And you have to keep in mind the Swiss tracks has ribs. So the there's little channels that'll allow the water to run out. My garage is pitched to the outside, so it'll run out underneath the garage doors. And then the rest will evaporate. The other nice thing about Swiss tracks when you're washing is I can do this, set my fancy gun on the ground and not mess it up. So I'll turn my water on. I'm going straight tap water. My tap water is treated. Um, of a Culligan system. I, I would recommend you do a, um, shoot, what's the brand? Kinetico, uh, but I have Culligan just because it was already at the house and it's, it's functioned well, it's just a softener with a, I think I have a pre-filter. So set this aside. I actually have, what do I do with it? I put it in one of the cabinets. I have a new wand holder let me show you what I'm talking about here. I'll zoom in a bit. So these, I think, are due shortly. Uh, but one of the problems with the current size of the wand holder is if I don't have a tip on and I don't have the gun on, when I drop this down in the current wand holder, now I can't, I have a, you have a really hard time reaching it. And you have to have really tight grip to get it out versus this is the new version, the shorter version that we've come out with. Is this is a shorter version? Well, I lied. This is the same thing. So anyway, we have a short one. I thought I they grabbed this one. I thought this was a short one, but it's not. This is the same one. Isn't that freaking stupid. Yeah, that's the exact same thing. Why do I even have this? This was like, oh, this is the one we took off the wall at HQ 
to put the short one, the short prototype on. Anyway, we cut off, I think, five inches. So that way, this thing sticks out like that. And so it looks a little bit more awkward with the gun sticking out, uh, but it, we have more function because then when I set my holster, my wand, I can reach it without having to reach down in it. Well, I guess anybody want a deal on a uh, wand holder? Let me know, I'll sell this to you on, to sell this one to you. This was on the, uh, sitting on my shelf and I thought that was the, but that's the one that we took off. That was dumb. Okay. All right, so we're all set up. So in other words, have no fear. We're not gonna flood the garage. You won't flood your garage. It actually works really, really well. Swiss Tracks is like, I think the best thing to have in a wash bay. You can pop it out and clean under it whenever you want. And the water can run underneath it and then evaporate up through the top. And then it's not slippery. So that's a, that's a real big advantage is to, what do I do here? So carbon ceramics, I really don't need to do, I kind of do, I mean, this, ever since I did the car, I haven't done a full wash on the wheels. I've just done quick washes. So this will be our first full wash in a while. I put about 150 miles on the car. Since I put the exhaust on, it's making me want to drive it more. All right. So one of the keys to carbon ceramics in order to keep them so that at least portion of BMW carbon ceramics that I have experience with, the, the dust is not dirty, like there's not a lot of dirt, but there is a lot of uh, buildup that tends to squeak and squeal. Uh, and so pressure washing, I think, is a really important part of the process to reduce that squeak because you're gonna blow out all that dirt. I'm telling you guys, this armor wheel coating, we have it in the store from my friend Bradley Nielsen is incredible. Look at how good that is. The wheel's already pretty darn clean. So you guys were right, I am an idiot. This brush I thought was a prototype, but it's not. This is the interior brush, which I've been using on the tires. I don't know what the heck you would need this. What are you guys doing in your interiors where you need a brush like this? You freaking dirt balls. Stop eating cheeseburgers. Um, and, you're, and stop getting goop all over your seats. And I don't know why you would need that. I, I like it on the tires. Oh shoot, I forgot to get, I, I don't remember, I was supposed to get a new lambskin. This one's about, about done, so. I, I told you last time, uh, last wash and talk on, on the Evo that I was gonna make a list and I didn't make the list. But yeah, I mean, this car is not super dirty right now. There's some funk on the side there, some dust on it, some, you know, I've driven it, you know, several, four or five times this week. But, you know, I wanna do preventative maintenance. This is what I like doing to keep taking care of my car. So, I'm gonna continue to do that. This is right at the edge of, it's too tight. So we need, we need the easy, we need the easy deed. All right, so we're gonna start with the barrels. Really tight with these big old, even though they're 20 inch wheels, these about 17 inch rotors, something like that. Clean the inside of the barrel nice and gently. So let's talk foam cannon. And the wheel well. So one of the things I think you guys have to remember, which you wouldn't know, I didn't know. I didn't know this until recently. I never really thought about it. But I've been talking to my friend, uh, Michael Stevens, who is on the home theater side, and I was able to observe him at the Cedia show. I've kind of followed him around a little bit and uh, kind of see the access that he's been given. You know, and he's quite a bit younger in this experience than I am. You know, he hasn't been on YouTube quite as long and, uh, uh, but he's, you know, he's talking to manufacturers and, you know, making all kinds of videos on products and kind of traveling around and 
and, and uh, you know, collaborating with people and, and getting, you know, having dinners with industry people. And it's just, you just, it, what happens is you start getting tons and tons and tons of information. And the further you get into it, the more access you get. Like in the beginning, Rupes didn't, you know, Dylan didn't believe in me. He thought I was nuts. They wouldn't let me sell the stuff. Um, you know, I just couldn't get, I couldn't get total access, but as time has gone on, I've gotten more and more information. And so I was able to watch him kind of same thing, get just gain, gain information, gain access to stuff. And so what happens is over time, I, I recognize this, is that you start to, you know what things are coming before anybody else does. You know, you know, I know what I'm developing. So there's all kinds of stuff going on in my head that I want to create and I want to work with manufacturers and things. But you get access to lots and lots of information. And so when I tell you that, you know, I'm not interested in something, it's usually because I know more than you think. Now, sometimes that's a real detriment. But you also have to factor in, you know, this is what I do for a living and I'm doing it a lot, like all day, every day. So not only do I have access to the information, I'm creating a lot of the darn information. And so I, you know, I know, I, I can usually tell without even trying a darn product if it's any good, just out of this pure obsession. And I know that some of you cannot fathom that. You can't understand that. It doesn't make any sense. You think I'm full of crap, but you can think whatever you want. I have a freaking PhD in this stuff. And so that, that this, this, the time put in, the energy put in, the amount of interest I have in all this stuff gives me you know, information, gives me insight, insight into what to do. And so the foam cannon story has been a rather sordid one. I started down the process with, uh, with my friends at Mosmatic. You know, we all, we none of us have liked the, you know, the, the, the current foam cannon construct or the previous construct where you had the PF, the, the original MTM foam cannon was the original. And then, of course, that's what all the Chinese knockoffs are based on. They're all based on the original MTM foam cannon, which functions great. It works great. And so the, the original foam cannon and the PF-22, they don't foam any differently. I mean, they foam identically. You don't get any more or less foam. The way we use the foam cannon, I almost wish you just took the darn adjustment knob off of it because we never use that. And so this... The, the ergonomics of the PF-22 improved a little bit when they came out with the flat bottle. And there's been some others that have come out along the way, you know, Trinova and, you know, um, you know lots of other companies have come out with uh, knockoff versions, sometimes making some adjustments, some improvements, some not. Uh, but the, you know, the MTM PF-22 has been the industry standard. I think it's still probably the quality standard, at least until the, the Grios came out. Um, you know, the stainless head, largely stainless internals, you know, stainless orifice, and versus most of the others are brass, including the original MTM. And so we've had just some minor improvements to it when they made the, the dot two bottle, which flattened it, but they didn't make a wide mouth because they weren't really sure how to do that without making a completely new head. And so it's not rocket science. You know, we all have thought the same thing. It's stupid for, originally it was stupid that the bottle tipped over because the, the, the tip was heavier and you know, the thing would fall over, especially if there was nothing in it. That was dumb. And then, um, then having the little tiny little hole to fill the, fill the thing up is also annoying. So that's always been dumb. I gotta clean my new titanium tips. I gotta pay attention now. 
they're not stock anymore. So that, uh, that kind of goofy setup has been you know, annoying to a lot of people. And so I think people have generally been willing, have a willingness to try different things. And uh, even when maybe those different things don't warrant you trying them, because again, you know, especially those, those of us that, you know, I, I get to write this stuff off and then usually get to sell stuff. So if I buy 10 different things, I get to sell it and then make my money back. So there's a real advantage for me. You know what, I forgot to coat these tips. So I'm gonna coat these things. But there's a real advantage for me to buy and try stuff because then I get to make videos, I get to share it with people and all that stuff. And most of you don't. And so that's why I find it odd that a PF22, especially if you have one, is freaking fantastic. Works great. But yeah, the, the PF22 works great, functions well. Shoot, I just sold off all of mine, the ones that I was physically using. And one of them I realized was the very original one that Phil from Detailer's Domain sent to me before they were launched, before they were released. And uh, here's the one I was using here. It's freaking awesome. And I didn't even realize it was that old. So the, back to my original comment, I was saying, you know, I, I talked to my friend, Jamie from Osmatic. We actually drew on a napkin what we thought it should look like. All stainless, have a very specific type of bottle, which I still, I'm not, I'm learning my lesson. I'm not gonna share with you what, they, what the plan is because I may still make it someday. Um, but we, we uh, decided to shelf that so we can make this because I thought this was more important because the PF22 is not, not problematic. You know, it's not, a, not an issue, I thought. You know, other than having the, you know, the wishing that we had a bottle that was, had a wide mouth. So, I'd been talking with my friends, you know, Rob and Mike Grindle, who are no longer with Velocity. So the way MTM is set up, MTM is a is a um, uh, an Italian manufacturer products. They contract manufacture some stuff in factories in China, uh, but then they you know manufacture the lion's share of their products in uh, in Italy. And uh, you know, Mike and I and Rob and I had you know had it on the docket for me to go to Italy for a long, long time. COVID happened. We didn't get there, but we had talked about this a hundred times about making a new version of, of the foam cannon with some of the ideas that I'd wanted to do. And so I wasn't in, in any rush. I mean, the PF22 works great. Wasn't in any rush to change it. None of you know this stuff behind the scenes because, you know, I don't always talk, I didn't just really talk about it and have much to say about it because we didn't have anything for you yet. But eventually we were going to end up with, um, with some version that was going to be an improvement at some point. And that just kept getting pushed back, pushed back, pushed back, pushed back. Those guys are no longer there anymore. Um, I don't really have much of a relationship with them. They, they kind of haven't been innovating at all for, you know, for the last year and a half or so. And so they're starting to get left behind a bit. And, um, and so then I started working on the Griot's deal. And, and Adam brought me a Griot's foam cannon, which I hadn't really spent much time with. And um, so uh, when, we, when we talked to, to Nick Griot, and I said, look, I, I think that, you know, I think that the, the one product, we sell lots and lots of foam cannons, probably not as many as they do, but um, we, uh, we probably, you know, are getting close to rivaling what they would sell in foam cannons anyway, just because we're the pressure washing people. And, uh, and so we um, decided, or they decided to allow me to sell the product. And so then it just made sense that we, okay, MTM, nothing's happening anytime soon that I know of. And uh... Man, that wheel coating is magical, people. I'm telling you. I'll make sure to show you all the water that's running out the driveway right now after we're done. 
So we decided to make the transition. There's nothing else that has come out since that has interested me at all. Remember what I said earlier, I'm not saying it to be a jerk here, but I have quite a bit of access that others don't get just because of the power of, uh, you know, of being able to buy lots of stuff, plus going to SEMA and being a crazy person and having lots of relationships now. I know the story behind most of the other stuff. So when you guys start talking these Chinese contract manufacturing companies, these most of them are just stealing product ideas. Uh, MJCC or MJJC, uh, Max Shine, you know, there's a hundred others. Uh, you know, you can go back to my original argument of, against the new, what is that, Giraffe Tools pressure washer. Who, who are these people? Who are they? Like, where's the picture of the guy who owns it? Where's the, where's it coming from? They don't tell you any of that. There's no person behind it. It's just simple. We're gonna try to make some money. We're gonna hire some shady, uh, some, some, uh, some Americans who are willing to sell their soul and they're gonna go out and hawk the wares at you know, various shows and things like that. And then we're just gonna walk around SEMA and walk around Detail Fest and we're gonna you know, send representatives around and we're gonna watch what's going on online and then we're gonna just take the ideas and we're gonna try to make it cheaper. It's never better, it's always cheaper. And so many of the simplest of purchasers of products Many of you have a job, you've got a lot going on, you don't have time to do this research, you're not, you don't have the access that some idiot like me has, and so you don't know these things, and maybe you just don't care, but I do. I don't want to, you know, chop off my nose to spite my face, you know, detailing and garage stuff and cars and things like that. This is my livelihood, this is my passion, this is my great love, and so I'm very protective of my dollar when I spend it on something. I do not want to be encouraging. I do not want to be incentivizing theft. I don't want to be exempt incentivizing laziness. I also don't think it's all that important to like run around chasing your tail, trying to improve. I'm all for improving process. Sometimes early adopting for me makes sense because I have to, actually I'm not early adopting, sometimes I have to make a new product because no one else is doing it or talk to a manufacturer about making a product. But generally speaking, if something's working, I don't have like this, this ultimate desire to rush away from it and, and abandon the old process. I wanna, you know, I'm not in this for tomorrow, I'm in this for the rest of my life. And so what I found, is many of you that have the least resources are the ones that are running around the quickest to abandon a process that's working. Now I love it. There's many of you that do have resources that are able to buy and try things and you know, I've shoot I've learned a lot from all of you. All right, let's um, let's foam the car and let me get the camera switched over here. Give me a second. We haven't done this angle in a while. Let's do it from here. Darken it up a bit. Maybe one back. And uh, the car is, I think it's dirty enough. This is, uh, I'm gonna use auto foam, not touchless, just because I have it in my foam cannon. Auto foam is from Belt Camber. It's a pre-wash. So this is, um, undiluted, so it's not diluted in here. The reason it's not diluted is because of how much flow we're, uh, we have coming out of the foam cannon. So we're at like 4.2 gallons a minute. And so uh, I'm just gonna move quickly. We'll get about a three and a quarter percent, according to my calculations, panel impact ratio on the car, uh, which will do a nice pre-cleansing. The recommendation is up to four and uh, I've got all kinds of things to talk to you about on this and not do this in the future. Hey, stop coming out this way.
So with this, it's just cover the car, get it on there, move on. I used probably 200 milliliters of product and then it'll run off. I'm gonna let it sit for five minutes or less. I like touchless better, I think. This one, it smells a little harsher. This one has more of a all purpose cleaner type scent to it. Uh, you know, whatever that's worth. All right, so we're gonna leave that on there. So the foam cannon thing, you know, you guys that are willing to sell your soul, you know, this is our place. Like this is detailing, this is what we do. And um, why are you allowing these companies, why are you giving your money to these companies that are just not contributing at all? They're just taking, they're just stealing. And then you get all defensive about it. To the M I don't care if the MJJ whatever is the best thing ever made. It's the company, just go to their website. Well, that's all I have to do is say, go to the website. They've stolen, they've knocked off Grit Guard, they've knocked off you know, their bucket dollies, they've not knocked off incredible microfiber madness, they've knocked off pretty much everything they have is a knockoff. And their foam cannon is a knockoff. So now the justification for some people is, well, you know, the patents have expired. Well, but what about all the other stuff? You know, it's just, and then go look at the site, like go, there's no about, like who are these people? You know, why are you supporting them? It makes no sense when you have like a family, you Richard Grio and his family, and they have been contributing to the car world for 30 years now. And, and I think it's a, it's a much better quality foam can. I can see that MJJC in one second and know that it's not as good. I don't care what it does. There's, what, what was wrong with this process? There's no improvement to the foaming part, to the foam cannon part. What improvement do we need? You probably, if you're not getting good performance, that means your orifice is not correct, your pressure washer is probably not very good, your soap dilution is not very good, so you're not using the right process, you're not using the right things, the right products to put it all together. Uh, so there's no need to argue the performance of the foam cannon because all of them, even the cheap ones out of the box, there's a hole in the foam cannon and then there's a little thing that's a little filter that aerates it out and a little thing that flattens it, that's it. There's not much to it, so it's not super difficult to make. Some of the ancillary parts of the, like the bottle being, being, you know, not tipping over and things like that or the density of the plastic and stuff makes a difference. So there's some ergonomic differences, but the performance difference of a foam cannon is pretty simple. Another example of not early adopting, you know, I just don't think I'm late to the party, sure, but I don't think coatings, waxes, and sealants were ready for this kind of product yet. And I don't think these kind of snow foam products were ready two, three, four, five years ago. The amount of formulation and testing that Pete Hamber has done over the last, you know, four or five years combined with the improvements of chemical resistance of coatings means that now I can use a more sturdy pre-wash type product like this and, um, and not strip the coating. I think, and I'm testing it. So, you know, for the, 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 it's probably three people, but for the people that uh, question my integrity on, uh, well, you haven't tested at all. So you're darn right, I haven't, I don't have freaking time for that. And I can tell, I can tell when something isn't any good. I can tell when something's stolen because I'm in this, I live this. I'm in this every second of every day and you're not. And so you can't, you can't put, you can't, Put yourself in my shoes because you haven't been there. I've been in your shoes, but you haven't been in mine, so you don't know what the heck you're talking about.
Smells like Christmas in here. So remember the first layer of soap was to actually do some cleaning. This is here for lubrication and minor cleaning if any. So to say it a little nicer, you know, somebody has to decide, you know, what, what you're going to use. You, usually it's you, but I mean, like I have to decide what am I going to put in the OG store? What am I going to put into my process? What am I going to use? I'm deciding that I'm making that decision based on a lot of information. And so, but the decision has to be made and then there has to be some basis for that. So like when you're gonna put an investment portfolio together, somebody has to decide what freaking stock you're gonna buy or what mutual fund you're gonna get. Somebody has to make the decision, and in my case now, today, I hire somebody to do that. Even though I have quite a bit of expertise and background, I don't have the time, I don't have the desire, I don't have the energy to go and do that research anymore. I don't have the access anymore either because I'm not in that industry. So I feel like I don't have the access, access to the information that I would like to have. So at some point we're probably going to make a foam cannon that's insane the way I want it to be made and then we'll improve it, improve it, improve it. Maybe, maybe not. If other companies like Griot's continue to make products like this that function well and seem to serve a purpose, then maybe I will never find the need to do that. But the choice to hang on to the MTM was largely based on the information that I had was that, man, we're probably going to make something great. And then when we didn't, I'm like, well, then uh, time to move on. But to say, prove it, prove it. I don't have to prove it. That's the whole point. The only person I have to prove it to is my darn self. And then rational, intelligent people can make a solid determination whether I'm leading you down the right path or not. Man, what a great experience washing a car that's like super, dang it, super dialed. So this has Expel topped with Crystal Serum Ultra topped with XOV5. Now, what I am starting to detect, I think, it just dawned on me the other day, I think that OG drying aid doesn't play as quite as well with XOV5. I tend to be, I feel like I'm pushing it around more. So I wanna play with that a little bit here. Now, CSLX though, or CSUXO operates a little differently on PPF than it does on paint. You know, it feels a little different but I have noticed it on the uh, Evo. I thought maybe my towels were failing and I'm like, you know what? I think it's this V5. I think V5 might be rejecting it a little bit. So I'll have to, I'll have to play with that. I'm gonna get the V2 drying aid out again here today and try it on half the car. Let's see what I'm experiencing. So I'm down to uh, down to uh, two. I hit 223 even after a uh, after cycling yesterday. But I'm like I'm right now. I'm walking around at like 225, down from 248, and I'm you know probably put on a freaking boatload of muscle in comparison to where I started out. So I've been doing, I talked about this on the podcast, but I've been doing the uh, Andrew Huberman. If you want, shoot me an email, matt at obsessedgarage.com and I'll shoot you a, uh, I'll just cut and paste my notes of what I put together. That I'm telling you, man, it's really freaking working. It's not that much money. It's probably maybe like 70 bucks a month worth of supplements. And then I'm doing a, probably a, like a modified carnivore probably closer to ketogenic because I'm not, 
I've added a little bit of fruit in here and there whenever I felt like I needed it over the last few weeks or, or maybe month and a half. Um, but man, I feel freaking great. So I don't know what I'm going to go to. I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing and see where I end up. And uh, the, I think that's the whole point of why it's working is no more, no more goal setting. I'm just, the goal was to get healthy and we'll see what happens. This, uh, this smell, this is, uh, this is fun. I like it. It smells pretty darn good. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll start breathing a little less. Chase, stop barking. But yeah, so I've been doing CrossFit five days a week, Monday, Monday through Friday, or Monday through Friday. And Saturday, we've been riding. Me, Mike, Chad, Matt, sometimes Nick. Rex has come out once. But I've been riding, you know, about 20 miles on the mountain bike. Yesterday I went head over handlebars and freaking crashed pretty good. Got my freaking knee all jacked up. Broke the computer on my bike. Messed up the brake a little bit. And you're just going, we were going pretty hard and I just well, lost concentration. Came, flipped over the darn thing. Luckily I landed in, land, my shoulder landed in sugar sand. So I didn't mess anything up on my body other than that I'm, I'm, my knee bleeding all over the place but then I had to ride like eight more miles back all banged up that was fun and then if you haven't heard if you're not members of inside the hex you're gonna you're gonna want to go sign up I uh crap none of my shorts fit anymore I need to buy some new clothes I haven't told the story yet on the main YouTube channel, but I did on Inside the Hack. So, Friday, not this past Friday, but the week before, I was going about my day, just fin it was uh, finishing up the podcast interview and Mike. That Mike inter F interview is really good. Mike does a great job of being interviewed. So, go check that out too. But, I got a text from my buddy, Bryn, and he said, hey, the building that we were talking about you getting a couple of years ago, what if we sold it to you? What, or what if it went on, a, on a, like a fire sale? Like a, they just want to get it off the balance sheet. And I said, would you be interested? And I said, uh, yeah. And my heart sank in my stomach. I'm like, oh no. I'm trying to get to Canada. We're developing our deionization system, which is coming along, by the way. It's gonna be freaking awesome. You know, we got big plans and I don't know, man. I've, uh, I'm, what's, what's the number? And he told me the number and I'm like, oh shoot, we gotta, we gotta have this conversation. So I immediately got in the truck. Mike and I went over there, start walking around the building. And let me rinse this off and I'll finish telling you the story. Rinse and dry.
finish this other side, looking pretty good. Yes, yeah, functions, even with the scent, functions exactly GSF. So just without the cherry scent. A limited run and I got like 95% of it. I bought, and they called me and said, hey, would you like to have some? And I said, ah, yeah, I'll take all of it. All right, good there. Let's dry it off. I always like to put the hose and gun away, buckets away if I can before I go further. It just makes me feel more accomplished. Let's pull these. I need to start doing this where I pull it out, straighten it out. I want it to wind in better, cleaner. And then I grab my towel that I use to fill up my foam cannons. Put it in my left hand. Pull back the slack to get the slack on the line here. Still haven't swapped my hose from the Cobra Jet to the OG spec version. Well, I'll put the plug somewhere. I'll find it later. It's not there. It's not there. I would only put it right here. Well, let's dry this thing off and I'll find the plug later. What could I have possibly done with it? So, still no update on the Apex Air thingies. I don't know. So this sucker is great. Um, we've got the version coming from, uh, actually, what do you call it? Ego. Ego has come out with their own version. So we, I don't know if we, we're getting some of those to test out because we still can't get these. Um, but this thing really makes the experience pretty fantastic. I like it a lot. All right, so let me get a uh, drying aid. Let's go with the... Uh, Original drying aid. Let's play with this a little bit. So this one has the, the new stainless tip that I should have coming soon. No ETA though. They still have to make them. This was just a prototype. So anyway, my friend Bryn, he's been after trying to find me. He's just connected to real estate here. We'll just say it that way in here in, in the area. And he's been after trying to find me a, a spot for years. We've gone and looked at many buildings together. And, uh, and so this building that I had looked at is, is like a, you know, a half a mile down the road from our current buildings. And we went to look at that. I went to look at it a few years ago. He you know, cued me in that it was gonna go for sale. And so I called the, uh, you know, the head of you know, commercial real estate for the, you know, the, the villages who owns the building. And he said, yeah, it was like, you know, some crazy number. I go over all the numbers in uh, Inside the Hex. I, I don't want to get into the numbers here today. I normally do, but we can talk about it after the deal is done, if it, if it happens. So anyway, um, the thing has been sitting on the market. It, it, it takes, it'll take a really unique business like mine to make it work. It was the, the banking corporate headquarters. It's 25,600 square feet. I uh, was talking to the guy in the parking lot and he told me the number and I got in the car and went straight home. <laughs> it was not gonna happen. And, uh, and so I um, 
forgotten all about it. And so then when Bryn texted me on the podcast, we went over to the building immediately. I said, man, at that, at that number, I think I can make this happen. I should sell a bunch of stuff. And if we could get the entire OG, you know, OG business under one roof, how freaking crazy would that be? That'd be amazing. So, yeah, this is working great. I don't know what it was. The, maybe it was the towel. So, we, uh, Mike and I go over and look at it, and then we go, uh, so Bryn and, uh, oh, here's my PP plug right here. I must have dropped it on the floor. So we go and uh, he takes us through it and um, it, uh, it, it's, it's a lot. It's, you know, the roof is toast, you know, it's an 18 year old building and it's, you know, it's 26,000 square feet. So that's 150 K or more. The air conditioning system hasn't been on much in four or five years. And it's like a $250,000 air conditioning, big giant commercial system. So that's problematic and it's not at the end of the life cycle. Those, those units can be, you know, they're belt driven so they can be serviced for 30, 40 years, but they're on uh, not 410A, what's the other 422 standard. So the Freon in there is different. So that will require a conversion here. If one of the evaporator coils goes, they don't sell that old type of coil anymore. So I would have to I'd have to get, you know, to transition in that. And the parking lot is about toast. As soon as we start driving 18 wheelers through there, it's gonna freaking fall apart. So even though it's a freaking squeak deal, I, I can't, I don't think I can afford, like I could afford the building, but I don't think I could afford the building in its current state. Just because those are ticking time bombs that it's not like something you could just do later. The roof is already, there's already signs of some visible leaks. It needs to be redone. If you don't do it, it's a, um, what is it, bitumen roof or whatever it's called. And so if that roof starts to fail, it crumbles and then they have to like tear the whole darn thing off and it costs twice as much. That's what Mike was telling me. I don't know jack about roofs. Roofs. So anyway, we're, I'm getting one last quote on the roof. I got a, a quote on the parking lot. And um, I don't know, we're gonna see if we can make it happen. We're gonna work with the, the bank to see. So the, it was the bank's building, so the bank owns it, and it's the bank that I bank with. So we all want this to happen. And then, you know, Bryn, who's one of those like amazing humans that, you know, he just, he wants to make it happen for us. And uh, so he's gone to bat and has some pull and some say in this. And so I'm hoping we can get the thing to, work and then because i need to come up with the money on the down payment for it i need to come up with the money for the we need to tear the whole thing apart internally inside i think i can do that i think i can make that happen i will save some money by having everybody under one roof to some extent but you know and i'm going to have a fifty thousand dollar a year property tax bill and crazy you know utility expenses things like that but I'm in metal buildings now, and each building has like two electric bills, and they're super inefficient. So, I mean, I, I think we're probably 60, 65% of the way there. So I'm encouraged. I, I'm hoping we can pull it off. I'm gonna know probably this week if we're moving the whole OGHQ to a massive facility down the street. I'll sell the building on 42, uh, the one up north, I'll, the curator's in, I will, um, I will work through and sell, I'll sell the commercial lots that I have next to, you know, 322 Oak Street, I'll sell the lot that I have in Woodgate and uh, figure out how to make it happen. So that's what, I'm, that's what I'm working on these days and it would be absolutely insane. It would be the coolest thing ever to get everybody in one spot and to make it take us that would take us the next 10 years before then I got the, the the goal at year seven is to buy 250 acres and then build the long-term OG vision that's part of our strategic plan so this would get us to that point where I wouldn't have to build like 10 small buildings all over the place and do it piecemeal one at a time the other difficulty of course is you know I'm gonna have to finance the thing and so the rates rates are substantially higher so that you know 
that makes the cost, the monthly carrying cost, quite a bit greater. But if I have a 20, if I have a roof, so if I can get them to help me with the roof and help me with a parking lot, and uh, I think that I think that we can make it happen. Yeah, I must have just been. I think I must have been the towel because this has XOV five on. It's working freaking working fantastic. I don't know what that deal is. Yeah. So what I would do, we would start by um, getting the warehouse set up immediately, and then we would start to tear apart the back side of it. Right now, there's about 4,500 square feet of warehouse space, which we'd move into immediately, uh, and then we would. Um, start to take apart the back side of what would become the warehouse and um, start to work on that and then that's where I would build my studio I'd have to build that relatively quickly so we can get back to filming there so I have that to, do, to deal with get that done uh, and then we would work on you know one office at a time but generally speaking it would be you have to see the video on inside the hex you know it's gonna be a lot of work but most of the office space and stuff would be we're tearing out offices, not adding offices, so more deconstruction cost than construction cost, which would be a lot less. But the uh, the the biggest the biggest cost would be I'm going to buy carpet tile. We're going to buy paint the walls, change the Cree lighting. Good to go. So it uh, we can have that thing looking OG spec in a year and a half or so, and then evolve it from there. So I'm super, super excited. I hope we can pull it off. But if we don't, we don't. All right. Yeah, I guess those towels, those towels that I had must have just be toast because on the, uh, on the Evo, it was just pushing it around. It was driving me crazy. This is why I haven't changed drying aid because this experience is magical. There's nothing better than this part of the process. And you can really see it on PPF on dark, dark green, non-metallic. So if it wasn't wiping off smoothly, we would see it. All right, go there. Yeah, so what I would build is, I would build, the way it's set up is my studio would be on the back side, and it would be um, roughly, let's see, I would build my office next to it. I would also have a lab in the back of the office for all my product testing and stuff, all the products that end up all over the place in my garage. And so I think it would be like one, like 110 feet long by 32 feet wide and, and run you know, about halfway, half the depth of the building, it'd be insane. I'll share with you more on that as I get there. That means it'll postpone me building the house garage. I don't think if I do this and I sell the other buildings, I don't think it will postpone Canada too much. Um, and in fact, we may speed up Canada a little bit because we'll have the resources, we'll have the, the facility to build and store the product, which is one of my biggest difficulties at the moment. Okay, that looks great. Nice and clean. I forgot to uh, wipe down the door jams beforehand, so you're probably yelling at me on camera for that, but. They weren't super duper dirty, so we'll just clean them at the end here. I also, you know, this is only the third time I washed this car, so I keep forgetting I need to uh, pop the wing up while I'm washing. But yeah, I think I'm, I'm hoping now with uh, my improved health, I'm, I'm driving to the gym again. So I started driving to the gym, which is a big step. And so now I'm hoping that I can uh, continue to extend it further. So I've been driving this car quite a bit, not to the gym, but around here. And so I plan on putting a, some miles on this thing. I'm excited for that. All right, let's get the jams. Let me put the wing up. 
this out here. I do need to do a quick vacuum to the driver's side at least. Wipe this off. So this car, remember, has 70% tint. I like it. I can tell I'm turning into an old man here. I, just, I like the uh, simplicity of a tint that I can see out of. And it's the ceramic heat rejecting stuff, so. I talked about this in the latest drive video, but I did the Focal swap. I would highly recommend against it if you're gonna do just the speakers. I think you would want to do, you need to do the whole amplifier setup. It's like $6,000 for the Hocals, which is nice, but it's uh, the, the Delta is not, it's nothing really, because the amplifier is too weak. I heard something tapping on the door. Okay, let's do our jams here. Do all their detail work. But man, I just imagine how cool. So we're going to do the LZ project. We're starting that on November, uh, November 13th. So in just a few weeks, I'm going to SEMA. I come back a couple of weeks later. We're going to start the LZ project. So we're gonna be at that for a couple of months. Then we're gonna end up, I think we're gonna get lots of momentum. So we're gonna have a lot of new people watching, a lot of new subscribers. We're gonna have a lot of momentum. We'll probably hit some, some of the YouTube algorithm. We're also advertising a bit to find, you know, new people that are interested in what we're doing. And so I think we're gonna have a significant subscriber boom as well as, you know, just interest boom which is gonna be kind of neat to watch. And then we come straight back. Theoretically, what I'm asking for is a February 1st close on the building. And so we would close on the first, move into that, start building that out, which I think would be super interesting. It's gonna be interesting to me anyway. And then from there, I'm gonna use that momentum to go out and start doing podcasts and I'm hoping that, you know, if I continue on this fitness path, we can show some pretty gnarly before and afters. Shoot, maybe I could do, go do a uh, talk Andrew Huberman and let me come on his podcast since I used his protocol to get fit. And if I have, you know, six, eight, nine hundred million subscribers, that gives you some pull to at least get them to open up your email. And it's, it's gonna be awesome. And then, you know, I'm doing the LZ project to test out how much interest I have and how much interest you have in the possibility of continuing to develop Destination OG-like solutions. I think there's you know, a lot of things out there that I can add some value to, and I really, really enjoy that stuff, as well as continuing to develop and hopefully manufacture and make different products, work with manufacturers, develop stuff. So I'm, I'm pretty darn pumped. And the cool thing is I got a lot more energy to do it now. I don't know why the heck I waited so long. I guess I just wasn't ready. It's not like I was laying around, but. So I clean up all these jams. I gotta order this thing. I'm gonna order this after I finish this video I got to order the little thing from Suncoast so I think I may do the stereo this week I think I'm gonna tackle it I don't have any major projects this week outside of hopefully finishing up the negotiation on the building so I think I might start taking that apart and see if I can get that done. And then my friend Matt Schaefer, who turned me on to this idea of the Focal stuff, 
will, um, he has a tune file for me that he'll send. So we'll just team view, he'll log in and tune this basically, because he just did one of these systems in a touring. So it'll be the same setup, same file. And then I'll get access to it as well so I can tune out some of the brightness. I didn't coat under here. I need to do that. Maybe I'll do that after we finish this video. Was, why didn't I do that? Maybe I did. I don't remember it. I, I think I would have. I know I coated under the wing. Yeah, I definitely did. You can you can see it wiping off. These to me are the key steps in keeping your car dialed in at a slightly different level than most. All right, let me grab the key. Let me open this thing up. Put the wing up. I got something funky on my key and I have no idea how I did that. My new key holder. So you should put that up when you start washing. But look, I got, we got these new, all the new key tag things. Bryce killed it with these. So we have like 10 different colors. It looks amazing. I need a dark green, we don't have one. So the original one, this is my original I've had forever and ever and ever, is uh, this is from an, you know, an RS catalog item from a 997 RS but this is like 200 bucks and you can't get them and you can only get them in one color, sometimes two. Uh, and so now we have them. It's a little bit thinner material, which I kind of actually like, but I got some, some oily on there. I don't know how. All right, so I clean under here and deal with the wheels and then we'll wrap it up. Let me get up under here so I can see a little better. Yeah, man, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna order the uh, the thing that goes in the front glove, front compartment. It's like a little protector you can put in there. I always get. I bought it for the Cayman. I didn't buy it for this. That doesn't make sense. It's like a little plastic insert that goes in there. And then I'm gonna order a car cover. I have a RS car cover. that I've been keeping because I know I'm going to get an RS again someday, but I hope I'm going to get an RS someday. Although if I buy this building, it's going to postpone a lot. <laughs> Just as I started to actually get a paycheck the first time since I started this business, it's all going to go away. It's all going to be going and back into the darn building. Shoot. You know, it's weird because I live this awesome life where, you know, I get to get all these cars and all this stuff, but this is, you know, it, 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 it's like cheating. It's like, makes you feel like you're doing really great because everything I want, or most of the things I want is, a, is part of the, you know, the business pursuit. But I'm not complaining. I get all the things I want and turn it into a business expense. I guess that's the dream. Okay. All right, so let's do the wheels. Yeah, I don't know what the heck I was talking about. This towel, it's great. I think those towels that I used the other day must just be loaded up and um, need to be replaced. All right, so let's hit this with some tire dressing with our new tire brush to test out. And then this car's donezo. Got that. These two, and this. Dressing. I kind of want to come up with a better solution for not just spraying the tire dressing out of my out of the bottle. I don't know. I need to think about that. I've been thinking about that a little bit. I haven't come up with a solution for it, but I'm 
telling you guys, this freaking coating, Bradley killed it with this. You know, I was pretty sure, but I am certain this is incredible. And he's tested a lot more longevity than I ever will. So I think the longevity argument, I'm pretty certain of. Yeah, I think this is pretty good. I think I would still use the, uh, the big guy most of the time. But the advantage of this is to get in, like these don't have the little rim protector. The cup twos don't have that. So I don't need to, I don't feel like I need to get into that seam on this, but. So that's a wrap. It's pretty good. And so then I'll leave the tire dressing sit. And when I pull it in place and put the cover on it, I might not even cover, I'm probably gonna drive it this week. I, uh, I'll wipe the excess off. So anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for uh, hearing, hearing me ramble about all the stuff that's going on. I'm telling you, just, just bear with me on new products and things like that. I, I, yeah, just imagine, put yourself in my shoes and I know it's hard to fathom, it's hard to think of it, but imagine you got a obviously crazy person, right? Obvious, obviously very particular, um, can't shut it off. Um, to put it into perspective, I think I've explained this in uh, Inside the Hacks, but uh, so, you know, when, when all the tool people, when all the tool people get mad at me, let me darken this up a little bit here. So I'll just give you an example of like the, the Koken tools. So or ha let's say has that, because I already have those. And so I get the, you know, I meet the people that has that, right? I meet the, uh, the, the German representative and I meet the American representative. This is like two years ago. Uh, and then I meet him again. Uh, and then this time I, they kind of remember the story. Maybe they looked us up last time. And so now they're, you know, willing to, to, to have a conversation. And so then I sell them the story. Here's what I'm looking to do. Here's how I've, you know, built this. Here are some, here's some of the data. Here's, here's how we've done. And so then after that, after meeting them, then I get on the phone, I have to remind them again, hey, who's who I am? Hey, let's log on to my website. Let me show you what I'm doing, what, I, what I'm thinking about. And so then I convince them, all right, let me, um, I'm not sure what I want. I don't want the whole line. I know that but I think I want to buy most of your catalog. And they're like, well, we'll send you some samples and we, we'll, we'll send you our, our best sellers. That to me is like instant cringe, your best sellers. What, is that? what does that mean? That doesn't mean anything. That just means what you've sold the most of doesn't mean it's what you have, you're probably missing a bunch of stuff. So I don't want the, what the salesmen are selling. I, don't, I want what is best. And so I don't, don't even send me that information. I don't want any of that bias. And so then I get the 300 page catalog and I get the website and then I ask them to send me the Excel spreadsheet of the, you know, the, after I fill out all the paperwork and stuff like that and become a dealer. Um, by the way, most of the time up to this point, I haven't been able to become a dealer first. So when I buy all this stuff, I have to buy it on my own retail uh, and then all the, footage and all the videos and all the interest we get afterwards, then I can use that to become a dealer. Luckily now I have a track record so I don't have to do that as much. So that's good. Uh, and so at least I get to buy things wholesale that I'm gonna waste money on. And so then I carry the catalog, I kid you not, I had that, it goes in my front seat, it goes uh, in the, into the bathroom with me, on the shower, it goes into my office, goes back over to HQ, goes back on my front seat and I'm just, looking at the catalog, circling things, highlighting things. In fact, the Koken catalog has green, red, and now yellow highlight because I go through it three, four, five times. This usually takes, you know, several weeks to a month to two, three months, depending on what else I have going on. And so then I'm, you know, walking around this catalog and then I'm figuring it out and then I have the spreadsheet. So now I have to transpose what I think I might want into the spreadsheet. So I start highlighting in the spreadsheet and I'm referencing back in the catalog and that's where I'm making 
the yellow highlighting, or the, actually the green check marks, and then the yellow highlighting I go through when I go back and reconfirm and I take some things out, add some things. Uh, usually it's something, it's so, so I'm usually buying about 80% of the catalog. What I have to buy, I still have to pay for. And so what has that, it was like 30, 32, $33,000 uh, wholesale. So double that retail roughly. And so then I buy all the stuff and then it comes to me and then I have the catalog, I have the spreadsheet open, I have the products come in boxes and they usually don't all come. So then I have to, cause some of it's back order, some of it's coming from, cause most of the stuff I'm buying, they don't really sell any of it because no one knows about it uh, and they don't care about it. And so then I make them bring it over from Germany. So usually there's a second and third and fourth and fifth shipment that comes. And so then I'm unboxing and it's everywhere. It's all over my countertop, it's on the lift, it's all over the place. So I'm opening stuff up and I'm sorting it and I'll probably sort that eight to nine times because first I open it up in the middle of the garage and then I move it over to another spot and then I usually move it into a toolbox and I move it out of a toolbox into somewhere else and so I'm moving that stuff on average you know five six seven times something like that every time I move it I get to touch I get to feel it while I'm working on cars I'm always using those tools and so I kind of know as soon as I looked at it in the catalog, I know a little bit more when it arrives and I get to unbox it. I know a little bit more when I organize it and then I can solidify my thoughts when I actually use it. And this is what I did with detailing and I did with pressure washing. I've done with all the things that I'm super interested in. By the way, I'm cheating here because I absolutely love this process. <laughs> like it's like what I'm born to do. Uh, if you had to pull teeth or if this was a job, this was something you had to like force yourself to do, forget it. It'd be It'd be terrible. I just happen to love doing this. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to spend the 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 100 hours um, to, 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 to buy this stuff and to try it and to get it all figured out. And then from there, um, then I start to organize and I start to use a little bit more and then I start unloading the things that I'm certain I don't like uh, and uh, start selling those off, trying to get some of my money back. I usually end up selling it for 50% off of my 50% off just to get rid of it, give stuff away, hand stuff out, get it out of my, uh, get it out of my life uh, because I need to move on to the next thing. And so right now I've got 87 screwdrivers down from 517 in this drawer right here. Uh, I haven't solidified it yet because I'm into Hazet, I'm into Koken, next will be Stallville, next will be Knipix, uh, and then PV Swiss, and Weha, and, and um, probably 10, 12 other different companies to kind of put together a grouping of things. And will that be the best grouping of tools in the world? I don't know, um, but it'll be darn good. Just like, are those detailing chemicals back there the best detailing chemicals in the world? I don't know, but this process that I just used is pretty freaking good. And chances are the hours and the expertise that's developed from the relationships that I've been able to get access to, the information I've been able to get access to, and then the catalogs and the spreadsheets, and then this insatiable, unquenchable desire to dig into this stuff, which helps keep me from jumping off the roof. Um, so I have something to focus on is what I figured out Obsessed Garage is many years ago. This is where the value comes into the world for me. That's where my value proposition comes. And then many of you that are watching this say, I can't do that. I've got a frickin' job. I got a life. I'm not a crazy person. So just tell me that this brush is good. I'll buy it. And then if I bought two or three things and they weren't, then, um, I'm done with you. You know, that's, so that's, that's the, that's the weight on me to get things correct because if I get things wrong over and over and over again, you know, eventually I'll lose everybody. Uh, and so I've been largely correct on this just because of the work. Is the work 100%? No, uh, but no work is. Uh, but this is what I did in wealth management. This is what I did, you know, I do when I buy a bicycle. This is what I do when I buy a t-shirt, when I buy anything. I enjoy and relish that process. And so that process is what I'm sharing with people. Uh, and so when I'm talking about buying tools or I'm talking about a foam cannon or I'm talking about a, a soap, uh, generally speaking, um, there's either hundreds of hours or dozens, at least dozens of hours of work, or I'm leaning on those, the work in the past to then be able to make a quick decision. This tool here, I'm not gonna spend hundreds of hours on, but I can tell 
pretty quickly. As soon as I saw it, yeah, I think that's it. Uh, and then I use it a couple of times and then I know. And, I, and, and the way I know is I want to I want to have one of these in my bucket. I want to use it. This is something I think the world should have. So that's how this whole thing works. And it doesn't make sense to like 99% of the population. It doesn't make sense at all. Does, destination OG doesn't make sense. Renting out or letting people borrow a car at my house the way I'm doing, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't have to, by the way. Um, and, and ultimately what I believe is that most people just want to know what brush should I freaking get? What exhaust should I buy for this car and why? And that's what I'm telling you. Sometimes we don't even need the why. The why is answered by all the work that you don't see behind the scenes that Again, I'm not taking credit for it. It's just what I like to do. Um, I would take more credit for it if it was something that uh, I forced myself to do. There's no forcing at all. I couldn't force myself to do it. It's too much freaking work. I just love doing it. And so that I get to do it, it's more of I get to do it than I have to do it. Uh, and so me walking around with this darn catalog and then catching inspiration over and over again is where I think the value prop to the world comes in. So. Anyway, I love these wash and talks. This was my original thesis of the whole Obsessed Garage thing. Do these uh, because this is my therapy. This is how I get out of my own head, let people in, and hopefully open up to the world. So thanks for watching. I'm going to finish the other three tires. I'm going to do a quick little vacuum to the carpet, and uh, this sucker is clean. See you soon. Thanks for watching. As always, stay tuned for more crazy. We'll see you soon.